Hey everyone, Dr. Josh Matson here. Um, I'm going to talk about the two most common primitive reflexes that you see in kids uh, that have learning disabilities. And, and when I talk about learning disabilities, that can be a, a whole range of stuff. But primarily, what I'm talking about is kids that struggle to read, kids that struggle to focus. Um, and you know, if you can't do those two things, you really have a difficulty learning. So. The two most common, there's uh, a reflex called an asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. It should go away at about six months of life. That's one of them, and I'm going to explain that one. The other one is what's called a symmetrical tonic neck reflex. It should go away at eight months of life. Um, so I'm going to talk about those two. First one, asymmetrical tonic neck reflex is a reflex that uh, we have in the first six months of life to help us to develop hand-eye coordination, to help us to develop movement and stuff like that. So what happens is if you have a baby, they also call it the fencer position, but if you have a, a, a child that's laying on their back and they turn their head this way, what will flexibly will happen is everything on the same side they turn their head to will want to extend. So their arm will want to extend, their leg will want to extend, and the opposite side, everything will want to flex. That helps you do a, a, a few important things. When your head turns, it helps you to start activating these muscles to start getting them stronger. And it helps you to start creating a connection between your eyes and your hands so you can start developing hand-eye coordination. Um, and then when you turn your head the opposite way, the same thing happens. But what happens is right around six months to seven months, this reflex should start getting inhibited or shut down because your brain should be getting developed to a point where it says, hey, you know what, I know how to use my turn my head now, I know how to use my arms now, I know how to make a connection with my hands and my eyes you know, I don't need this reflex anymore, let's get rid of it. That becomes a really important thing that if it doesn't go away, and every time they turn their head, their arms on the opposite side want to drop out, it makes it really difficult to learn to crawl. So if I go to crawl, I have to tr slightly turn my head and extend my arm, slightly turn my head and extend my arm. But if you still have this reflex, whenever you turn your head, your arms want to start dropping out, which creates um, uh, crawling difficulty and stuff like that but also what happens is this reflex if it's in the way it creates difficulty with everything crossing midline so everyone hears of kids that have difficulty crossing midline but that doesn't just mean with their hands it also means with their eyes and what you see with these kids when they still have this reflex present and they're trying to learn to read and stuff is their eyes will track 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 and then you get these big skips in the middle of their vision because they have difficulty crossing the midline of their body with not only their hands but also with their eyes um, it also, so to be able to read appropriately, you have to be able to track nice and smooth and efficient um, across the line and then jump accurately from one target to the next. So that's why that's really important. Another thing that it plays into is a lot of kids that come into our office, they have handwriting difficulties. They have, um, you know, difficulties with that. And this reflex plays into that as well because what happens is, like, let's say I'm off to the right side here and I put my paper off to the right side because I'm right handed and I turn my head towards the right. Reflexively, when you still have this reflex, everything on this side of your body is wanting to extend, everything on this side of your body is wanting to flex. So, if I'm turning my head this way and I'm going to write, your hand is reflexively wanting to open, so you're trying to hold onto a pen, but your hand is opening at the same time, and it makes it very, very difficult to maintain a good grip. So you start getting weird grips with it as well. So what a lot of kids do to compensate for that is they'll turn their paper, you know, some even 90 degrees, they'll turn their head, because when they turn their head like this, it allows this side to start flexing, and it allows them to make a good grip, because their whole body is flexing on the opposite side. Um, so that one is really, really important. And if you see a kid that has an eye tracking issue, especially what's called saccadic eye movements, when their eyes track from side to side or their eyes are jumping, 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 you see all the starts and stops in their eyes when they track. And a simple way to look at that is, is literally just put a dot on your finger, just like that, and have them just track the dot from side to side, nice and smooth. And you should see just really smooth, nice eye tracking. Um, everything after like the first year of life, you should really be able to see pretty good eye tracking. This develops at about 14 weeks of life. Um, so, but if you see skip, 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 that's called saccadic eye movements. You almost always find this in kids that have an asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. Another thing that you find in these kids is they cannot, in a lot of them, they can't fixate their eyes on something and move their body at the same time. Whenever their body moves, their eyes reflexively move wherever their head moves. Uh, and this is again from early reflex. If your head turns this way, everything on that side of your body straightens and you're creating a hand-eye coordination there. So wherever your head goes, your eyes go. But when this reflex goes away, you develop the ability to use your eyes opposite your head. If you don't get rid of the reflex, your eyes move wherever your head moves. So if you're trying to focus on something the teacher's saying and someone makes a noise over here and you slightly turn your head, your eyes are going to reflexively jump off.
reflexively jump off. How you test this is just take their head and say, hey, I want you to look right at my nose. Don't take your nose off it and start turning their head. You can do it nice and slow. And kids that have this, this is called an impaired vestibular ocular reflex. You'll see their eyes jumping off, off target. They can't keep their eyes fixated. Uh, and to be able to focus just on anything in life, you have to be able to control your eyes and focus your eyes because that's where your attention is. Um, so that's the first reflex. It creates a lot of issues. Second one is what's called a symmetrical tonic neck reflex. It should go at eight months of life. Um, you see it going away when or a kid developing it when you when they go on all fours on their hands and knees and they start rocking back and forth before they start to crawl. Uh, it's a reflex that helps you to connect your upper body and your lower body together so they can work in unison with each other. Um, so things you see with that, it all, with the eyes, it helps you to be able to develop convergence of your eyes, divergence of your eyes, and tracking up and down. So to be able to read, you have to be able to converge your eyes in on whatever you're reading and then track nice and smooth. If you can't converge your eyes or something called convergence insufficiency, which is in the research is about one in 10 kids, um, if they can't converge their eyes in together, they start getting one of two things. They'll either start, their eyes will start drifting and they'll start getting double vision or they'll completely just shut off an eye altogether and just use one eye and they'll lose depth perception, but it's more efficient for some people than using both their eyes together or than, than using, than getting double vision. So they shut their vision off. Um, but if that reflex is there, that that reflex is one that helps you to develop convergence and divergence. Because if I'm on my hands and knees and I'm bringing my head up and down, I'm changing my eyes from a close target to a target farther away, a close target to a target farther away that helps you to develop convergence, divergence, convergence, divergence. Um, and the other thing that it plays big, big into posture wise is it helps you to develop a good low back curve so that you can sit up straight without um, getting uncomfortable. When it's there, what you see is really poor postures in kids and they actually, it's really difficult for them to even straighten up and they have really underdevelopment of their low back, which plays into um, a lot of the kids that look like they're fidgeting all the time or, you know, constantly moving like this. It's not actually because they're fidgeting, it's because they're getting uncomfortable very quickly. Because when you don't have a good curve in your low back, like you're supposed to have a nice good curve, if that straightens out, you start compressing your discs, which is uncomfortable. And if you have really poor posture because you never developed your low back musculature and you don't have good stability, you get uncomfortable very quickly. And those are kids that constantly want to move and change positions or maybe they'll slouch really bad like this, but it takes stress off of that, that part of their spine. Um, but those are the two most common reflexes that I see in all kids that come in with different types of learning disability, whether it's everything from reading to handwriting issues to behavioral issues at school to attention issues at school, they almost always have those two reflexes. And they make life extremely difficult if they're still there, uh, especially from a learning aspect. So uh, if you guys have any questions on that, let me know. I hope this helps you guys. Uh, enjoy your day and we'll, we'll talk to you later.